How's it going guys? This is the Fink Desert Race. This is our living arrangement. Chris's foil palace. My luxury two man Taj Mahal. We're in Fink. Dusty as hell and the, the buggies are about to take off. I'm gonna go watch them from some hill. So this is the second day of the race and we have stayed overnight and we're just about to make our way to go watch the first buggy and this is just Chris reenacting Priscilla Queen of the Desert. If you're not Australian you probably haven't seen the movie. Now this is the first uh, mound um, between the start of the race and um, Toby Price was the first one to leave in the buggies and this is just a photo of us trying to combat all the dust as you can see the buggies really uh, turn it up and um, you don't want to be breathing that in the whole day this almost looks like Star Wars slash Mad Max to be honest with uh, some of the get up we were sporting um, like Chris here with his goggles As you can see, these are the faster riders, so they were allowed to leave um, one at a time. And now we've got the uh, sort of intermediate riders leaving in smaller packs, I think of between five and ten. And I think this is done um, because of all the dust, so obviously you don't want the lead riders uh, or kind of compete in each other's dust. Whereas with the intermediate so riders, um, they're not really. Um, up for contending as, as much as the lead riders, so it doesn't really matter. Now we unfortunately had to leave early that day uh, because we had a strict timeline that we had to meet. We were going to make our way down and camp in Udendada. But as you can see here, it's a relatively um, small race in terms of like, sponsorship, I, I, I suppose. Um, it's nothing like the Dakar. Um, I suppose that's what makes it nice. It's still quite a, a low-key event where people can support themselves to do the race. You don't need a lot of money. Uh, the prize pool is only $10,000 anyway. And um, this race was started in 1976. It was only a, a locals doing the race up and down and um, yeah here's the start I should have gone in a bit closer but anyway you can see them there all about to take off but there was enough interest and it became a full on race and uh, later on they allowed buggies and the four wheelers to compete as well and for a while there was King of the Desert to see who was fastest and, and the motorbikes were winning that for a while and at some point the buggies started just annihilating the, the motorbikes so there was a sort of two Kings of the Hill now, two $10,000 prizes. But yeah it's really nice with a whole lot of privateers riding. Um, like I said Toby Price has raced this in one handful of times and um, he's down here with Red Bull but I, I don't think Red Bull puts too much money into this race as there's not much money to be to be had and um, like I said there's, there's some TV coverage but this is not an international event really but needless to say that it was a, it's a great experience really Mad Max like um, I'd definitely come again and uh, but just note it's a dry town so you can't buy alcohol there you're going to have to bring it in yourself which is a little bit hard on the motorbikes to carry cold beers across the Simpson. Now I didn't film too much from um, Fink to Undata because it's pretty much just like this the terrain and um, very hard pack with rocks um, the amount of rocks varies but uh, it's pretty nice and you can just sort of sit there and cruise all the way down
Now we camped at the back of the hotel in Undara and we had our first shower of the trip. And uh, five days into the trip, I can tell you it was needed and um, it was probably one of the best showers I've, I've ever had. But that's um, where all the good times ended. So when we pulled into William Creek on the second day um, of this stint, is Chris uh, performing some magic in the hotel. But anyway, cruising into that hotel, we oh, I realized that Chris had a flat tire. And so we weren't really sure how long um, it had been flat while we were riding. Uh, we were running quite low pressures anyway, so perhaps he didn't realize, and the tire's quite a hard carcass as well. So we'd hoped that, like me before, we could just put some pressure in it, it would hold, it was just something wrong with the valve core, it would be all right. So luckily there was a compressor there, we pumped it right up, and we kept on riding. Now, unfortunately, about five kilometers later, Chris stopped and we realized that it wasn't uh, a lucky one-off valve issue, um, the actual tire and tube was stuffed. Luckily, we were each carrying a tube and we were also carrying that slime. Now, we tried to put the slime in and we just couldn't get it in. We were scratching our heads, trying to get it in, trying to get it in, it would just would not go into the tube. Um, so we took the tire off and we realized that the actual tube, we don't know how long it had been run flat, but the tube had melted. The actual valve core, core section had melted, so we couldn't actually put any air into it. Um, because of that so we were quite amazed but anyway this is the I think this was the second flat I believe um, oh sorry the first so we put a new tube in and we kept riding and you know five kilometers down the road again flat you know and now this continued I think five more times and um, it's not an exaggeration we I believe we had to change the tire five times in, in total I think so we had my spare tube from the day before, we had Chris's spare tube. We also bought another tube off um, someone on the side of the road. We patched tubes as well to get us there, but it just kept, um, we just kept having an issue. Right? You know, once we nipped the tube with the tire irons, and then the rest of the times we weren't quite sure. And at this stage here, we actually felt the inside of the tire and it seemed all right. And now we don't know if perhaps it was on the limit and once we started running it again, it got worse, but when we finally did get into Marie at about 11 o'clock at night and we smashed a few cans, we decided we're going to just get an actual cabin. Um, we need just some time off because this really was quite stressful. Five or six hours changing tires one after another five times in a row. Um, and tempers started getting up there as well, trying to figure out why and what had gone wrong. The next day before we left, we double bagged tube so we cut one tube in half and put it around another heavy duty tube and um, that got us to birds I suppose this is what happens when you don't shower for five days it's another fly on the round just a bag just flies there's my shirt just some flies hanging out Let's see how Chris is going. Oh yeah, his back's lovely. Lovely. How are you loving the flies, Chris? Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. 